morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're calling in from. My name is Charles Sterling, and today we've got Layla, one of our bestest MVPs. Um, actually, at, for a while, you were just a artificial intelligence MVP, but now you're both a Power BI and artificial intelligence MVP. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And uh, very, uh, yeah. very, very glad we got that fixed. And today, she's actually going to be covering, again, positively one of my favorite topics, is how do you actually go out and use Power BI for going out and writing fun presentation tiers for application development, using Flow to go out and automate that process, and of course, using Power BI to visualize that data. And then she's actually adding to this mix how to use uh, some of our machine learning and cognitive services in that fold. So um, I, don't, I don't think I've told you this, Layla, but I've been playing with the new build of the Power BI custom visual, and it now has an, a, a refresh object hanging off of it so you can actually or a method off of it so you can go out and ask for your power bi integration dot refresh open print close print and it's going to go out and un refresh the, the underlying data model on the report and update the report so i will positively be showing that in definity when i'm going out to see you um i hope to have it released at that point but even if it's not released i will actually show everybody at definity oh which actually brings us to a great point why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to cover who you are and definity which i have actually mentioned a couple times okay so uh, hi uh, hi everyone i'm leila and uh, i'm based in new zealand auckland and as chuck just mentioned we are in auckland we have a, a great conference named definity that's uh, chuck will be there and it's really exciting for us uh, i'm going to uh, today i'm going to talk about the uh, text recognition so i'm going to show you how you're able to take an image to create an application with power apps that's able to take an image from a recipe or from a book and then it's going to convert the text in the image to uh, a text that you can store it in your sql server in your excel or any other platform so as uh, Chuck mentioned, I'm AI and uh, Power BI uh, kind of data platform MVP. So it's a cross join. And I'm a speaker uh, for more than 100 conferences around the world. I'm really excited about all of them. And also, I'm the author of a book. Uh, actually, one of them means for APRES, another one is a free book that I'm going to update that one. But if you want, you can go to our website that is radacat.com and download the book also this is my email address and twitter so if you have any question after that i'm really happy to answer and, so, and also did you guys just updated the rookie to rockstar book too as well right uh yeah yeah, yeah exactly so reza actually uh had a rocket to rockstar but recently he going to he's already kind of uh, update that one and created about uh five module of that so yeah that's a okay. new one I'll, I'll actually the links there, but I'll make sure and put it in the chat window as well. Sorry, Lele, go ahead. No, thank you. So um, I'm going to talk about the how we can use uh, kind of the power apps and Microsoft Flow and cognitive services. But before that, I just want to have an overview of the Microsoft AI tools that we have. So this is my kind of classification. Uh, so as you know that uh, we have different tools for machine learning. You heard about machine learning in Microsoft tools a lot. I can, we can categorize them into three different categories. So the first one is using R and Python. We can use these two languages in different tools of Microsoft, from SQL Server, from Power BI, in different Azure tools like Data Lake, uh, Databricks, and many others. So this is the one. The other category is Azure ML. That's a kind of the uh, easy to use tools, but still you need to know how to work. And the last one is actually cognitive services that we call them as a pre-built AI. So what's the difference between these categories? So for the first category, is not easy to use. So you see that I put a red sign. So that means that it, you need to learn the language. You need to know the algorithm. But is the accuracy, flexibility of the code, you can apply in different scenarios is really good. The second category that is include Azure ML, there are other tools also, is actually not as hard as the other one. But still, it has a kind of, you need to know some things. And also the accuracy is not 
as is good, but definitely writing R and Python can help you to have more flexibility, but still, it's good. And the last one. So the last one is cognitive services, which is really easy to use. The accuracy is good, but uh, I'm not saying that it's bad, but actually maybe for some specific scenario, it can be changing. So you see that we have a continuum of the uh, AI tools that for general purpose, you can use cognitive services and Azure ML. If you have a really specific tool uh, uh, scenarios, you can go for R and Python. So I'm, uh, in this uh, scenario, I'm going to look at the Microsoft Cognitive Services that actually provide really cool API for us. So many of you maybe heard about that. I'm just going to the website to show you. So this is the Cognitive Services that we have. So as you see here, we have vision, speech, language, knowledge, and search. So uh, as you see, for example, uh, for today, I'm going to talk about the one of the category for vision. That's a computer vision and is actually OCR. So uh, this is a one of them that I'm going to use. But if you go, for example, to the language, there's the text analytics, uh, language understanding, and translator, and the other. Or for the speech, it's going to convert your voice to the text. So there are really exciting things. And to be honest, you will see that this really works very well. So for general purpose, they works very well. So uh, I'm going to show you a use case scenario for the optical character recognition or OCR in image. So to see that how it work, I'm just going to show a very fast demo here. I'm going to uh, kind of browse and I'm going to uh, 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 where is that? Let me see that. Where is my image? I'm going to bring some image. So, for example, uh, one of my texts that has, uh, let's see that, what sort of text I have. So, for example, this one, I'm going to image to upload this image and is going to actually show the content of the what you see in the image in the preview. So I'm just submit and I wait. So yeah, so you see that the image. So uh, weather monitoring, this is one of my image that I have my computer. So uh, you see that how is able also is able to kind of handwriting and the other stuff. So this is the cognitive services. As I said, that is a pre-built AI that we have. And uh, now we are, I'm going to actually to show you the scenario. So the scenario is actually contains three main steps. The first step starts from Power Apps. So that means that you're able to take a photo from your recipe or from a book that you want, and it's going to take a picture, pass it to the Microsoft Flow. Microsoft Flow is going to actually use uh, steps. So for example, using the OCR, to convert the image to text, and then you're able to pass it to the Power Apps or send it to Power BI, and you're able to see. So my demo is actually contains three main steps. So what is the first step to start? The first step is actually is to uh, go to the uh, actually uh, cognitive services. So you need to go to the cognitive services. And uh, if you didn't use it before, you're able to use the Try Computer Vision for free. You can access the free account that you can use it. Or otherwise, you can go to the portal.azure.com. And under that, if you have a Azure uh, subscription, you can go there. And you can looking for OCR there. So here, if you click on create a resource over here, let me also enable my zoom in so you can easily see, I can focus on that. So you see that we have a category AI and machine learning. So under that, we have the computer vision so this is another way to access the to create a computer vision here so two way from 
cognitive services website, you're able to try it and get a, that one because I'm already kind of uh, consume my free account, so I don't have, but if you're your first time, you can go through that or through the portal. If you have a Azure subscription, you can go to the portal, go to the AI machine learning computer vision. And uh, so this is a kind of the uh, two step that we need to do before we go to the Power Apps. So the first step, as I mentioned, is to create a app. I'm going to create an app. As you see that this is one of the image. So it's going to take a picture using a button, shows the uh, image taken, and then it's going to connect to the Microsoft flow that I have and show the result here. So let's start with that. So the first step, I'm going to the Power App. So let's back to the Power App. This is my Power App here. I'm going to sign in with my uh, Office 365 account that I have with Red Hat. And uh, I'm just waiting to log in. So here, as you see, we have two options. So you see that we have a, a create for the tablet view or we can create from mobile view. So I'm going to create a blank uh, canvas for the uh, mobile view. So I'm click on that and I'm set that make this as a app. So it's going to provide me an environment for the uh, mobile preview. So I'm just waiting till it's uploaded. So creating the app for me. Any questions so far? Can you hear me, Leila? There hasn't been. Um, I've got Casper and Guston and somebody else, Amit Shukla, saying you're doing a great job, but no questions. Oh, good. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. Cool. So I'm going, this is an environment of power app. So that's a, uh, for people who comes from developer background, they may see that it's really easy uh, instead of writing C sharp code or the other. It provides uh, kind of the really easy to access to that different component. So here, as you see, I have I just have provide an overview what I have here. So I have an area to create my application. As you see, it's the size of the mobile app. On the tab insert, if you look at here, if my zoom in works, you see that we have different control here. So these are the control that I have here. Most uh, beside that, I have different screens. So you're able to create different screen or different page for people who comes from Power BI background. You remember that in the Power BI desktop, you have different page. So here also we can have different screen that we can navigate through them. For this example, I just need one screen and I stick to that. So the first step is going to put a camera because I want to take a picture. So I'm click on insert and under the media, I'm looking for option camera, this one. So I'm going to put the camera here. So the camera is actually, as you see, uh, for example, my computer has three different camera. So it has a camera number one, as you see, it, is a camera number zero. I can change it to different camera that I have. So I have three camera, one in the front, one in the back, and also I have a separate camera. If I'm switch to each of them is actually show different one. So this is, for example, this is my, hey everyone. And so this is a kind of the camera that we have. Uh, so for this example, I'm going to use my back camera that is here because I want in the mobile, I want to take a picture through that. So I put uh, for the camera, I put number zero. So this is the how you set that one. The other setting that I need to do is about the streaming. So a stream rate. So a stream rate is actually help you do kind of in uh, how much you take a picture, how much is fast to take a picture and kind of store it and the stream rate. I'm going to put it as a one. 100. So a stream rate should be 100 for this example. And uh, so this is my camera. So now I need a bottom. So when I actually take a picture, I need a bottom to take a picture. So here I'm going to insert a bottom here. So uh, this is the one. Uh, as you see, uh, if I click on bottom here, I have 
different attribute for that. So I have unselect. That means that if someone push the button, what should happen? So here initially is false. We can add code. I will add some code and you see. However, we can change that. I want to change the uh, button. I want to example. Uh, take a photo. So it's actually going to be take a photo. Now I'm going actually to uh, do another thing. So I'm going to uh, put some code over there for my, uh, actually for my bottom. So uh, I'm click on the take bottom and I'm going to navigate to the on select. That is means if someone click on that, what should happen? So I want to actually says that if someone click on that, I want to update. So that means that I want to refresh a variable. I want to update the context. And I want, I define a variable name, take, taken pick, for example, the picture that has been taken. It should get the variable from camera one. So you see that I have camera one there, camera one dot stream. So that means that whatever we get from the camera one should be stored into the variable taken pick. And anytime everyone click on that, the picture that I'm taking will be stored in this variable. So this is about the bottom that I have. So always that we take a picture, we also want to look at it. We want so also to see that how's that picture also works. So I'm going to actually click on image. So under the insert, I'm going to add the image. And I'm going to actually put it here. So after we take a picture, we want to see that one. Again, for image, we have different attributes. One of the attributes that we have, as you see here, is the image. So image attribute can be anything. So it, the table, if you remember. So let me... Hey, Leila, can I get you to repeat that last sentence uh, about every five oh, minutes? we're getting some high latency. So I'm gonna pause you just for a second and just repeat the last sentence you just said. Uh, thank you, Chuck, sure. So uh, what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to take a picture and uh, when I'm taking a picture, I want to show the picture in a image. So everyone uh, able to see that, what's actually what picture has been taken. To do that, I'm going to insert, so I'm doing it again. Let me do it again. So I'm going to click on insert and I'm going to uh, click on media. And under the media, I have the, uh, I have the component image that actually show me the image that we have. I just drag it here. So every time I take a picture, the taken picture will be shows here. So that will be sure that the picture is correct. So, uh, same as the camera, same as the button. Uh, email. Hey, Leila, also can, can, Casper has a question for you. So the update context is that a way of just setting up a global variable? Uh, yes. So you will see that it actually be able to access to the other. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll see in a second. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So. Here is actually, we have a image here. So as you see, we can have different variables. One of the variable that I'm going to set for the image is the image variable. Image variable. So I'm click on the uh, image icon, I'm go to the image uh, attribute here. And instead of the sample image, I'm going to write the name of the variable that I'm stored the image. That was taken pick that I'm have. So, for example, uh, I want to run it. Uh, let me uh, kind of uh, clear some parts. So, I have a, for example, the book here. So, I'm going to actually take a picture. I'm going to run it. So, run the code. And 
you see that the picture will be shown. So I'm going to change it. I'm going to put something over there to make it change. So again, I will take a photo and it's been changed. So that means that the, my camera works very well. So the next step, so this is really easy. People may ask that how we can design the things. They are there are really interesting uh, things about that, how you can design, uh, how you can actually uh, provide a theme for your uh, application so you can follow it around. So that's, that's really easy. Uh, I provide some documentation on my weblog that you can go through that. So this is the first step. Always remember to save your, what you actually do. So I'm going to put it as a, um, OCR. I put a name for that. And uh, you can choose a icon for that. And you're able to actually to uh, kind of save it. So I'm going to save it again. Uh, just let me, yeah. Power platform saving. You can save it. So I put on the, oh, I save as, sorry. I need to save it. So you should push save, not save as, so yeah, just that one. And you can share this application with other also, so you can share it with the people who are in your company, so it will be shared with them. So later stage, they are also able to see that. If they if they have access, so definitely you need to provide access for them. So in this step, we just create a camera that take a picture. Uh, we still need to do something here. So this is the actually the one that we have. Okay, so I'm back to the apps that I have. So this is my app. I'm going to edit that one. Okay, any questions so far? Cool. So, uh, no, I don't know why. Okay. All right. Let me see. Go there. So, always remember that actually save what you've done so we can actually go have access to what you've done. So, this is my app that I've created here. It's not kind of the thing. And, uh, okay. So, uh, When you actually have two open power apps, you get the message like this. So here I get a message that the, your camera is using. So always be careful that when you're working, close the other one if you have, and actually so you can kind of use the other camera here. So uh, this is because of that. So if I change it to the other one, for example, to this one, it should be okay. Now, so I'm going to again zero. It should be fine. Okay. So now I'm going uh, to the second step. The second step is actually is going to create a Microsoft flow. I'm going to create a Microsoft flow that's able to get the image from the uh, uh, from actually my Power App and apply machine uh, apply OCR image to text recognition on that. So. And uh, so I stop here, I need to back here, but for now I'm going to the Microsoft Flow. So what is Microsoft Flow? Microsoft Flow actually created automated workflow that trigger with different action. Let's see that how it work. Uh, so this is Microsoft Flow environment. Uh, you're able to sign it with your Office 365 account. I'm going to my flow here. So under the my flow, or you can uh, actually use some template or using your uh, create your own. So they are both possible. If you uh, kind of interested to see the other template, you can click on template over here. So you see that I have two options, my flow and template. Template provide really interesting pre-built uh, flows that you uh, do not need to create a new one, just uh, sign in in a specific application. So for example, uh, I also show a 
case before that so for power bi for example if you search you will see that we have a send the email to any audience when the power bi data alert is triggered run a sentiment on analysis on tweets and push result to power bi data set so these are the pre-built for this scenario i'm going to actually uh, create my own flow so i'm cl click on my flow option here so click on my flow and click on new so i'm going to create from the blank not from the uh, template and i'm click on uh, create from a blank so the first step is a trigger i take a picture so taking a picture from power apps is a trigger for me so i'm like here power apps so the trigger, that means that the start of the flow, the start of the workflow is when someone take a picture with Power App. So I click on that. So it's connected to my, my Power App. I will show you how we connect them together. And doesn't need any, actually, you do not need any parameter. So the next step, maybe you said that, okay, we take a picture. Now we just need to look for OCR. Uh, or text to uh, actual image to text. Yes, we have that component here, as you see when I write image to text, at the bottom of the page, I can see two actually components here that actually get the data. But uh, because of the uh, style of the data that we get from Power Apps, because the image is a specific format, we need to do some changes. Uh, we need to first store it in the SharePoint folder, convert it to the binary data, and then pass it to these components. So I'm in this stage, I'm not able to use these components yet. So I need to search for create file component from SharePoint. So just write create file, and then click on create file SharePoint, and provide the address that you have so for myself is actually is radicat so i'm going to use the uh, as site address is a custom variable that is this one and i'm going to uh, put it in a specific folder for that so i'm going to for example to the share folder and i'm going to uh, put a name for that so uh, platform OCR and then uh, the content for that so uh, is actually so that's a setting we're saying that we want to store the image that it takes from power app into our sharepoint folder as this format and also we want to uh, kind of uh, get the data from power app uh, so here is actually we can say that yeah ask uh, in power app or we can actually use the other parameters so i'm just put uh, the other expression that we have so here i'm writing some formula so the formula that i'm going to write is actually uh, is a uh, this one i'm just going to say asking power app so this is the one that i have here so this is the one that i'm get from power app now i'm going to actually call the ocr function so the ocr i'm search for image to text so there are two options here the json and the text so i'm using the text one because it's actually helped me to kind of do that so for the image text one the image source is image content and here i need to convert the uh, data type you can also convert here but also that's all possible so here i'm going to write some expression so here you have two options as you see you can see get the data from different places or you can write some formula i'm going to convert data uh, uri to binary i want to convert the taken image to a data type binary so i write the code here going to the expression 
and I'm going to pass the uh, the uh, uh, data file that I'm get from the Power Apps. That is create file or file content. So I'm just click on that. So it's actually is going to convert the image to that one. Hit the OK, and now I have the data. So this is actually the process of so we get the image from the Power Apps. We store it into the uh, SharePoint folder. I'm saying that that's because the format that passed from PowerApps not able to recognize. Layla, I have to ask, how long did it take you to figure this out? Is this like oh. a day or is this a two day? I mean, three days a week? No, no, how no. long have you been working on this? Oh, this, exactly. this is amazing, by the way. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. It's actually a really good weblog and video what, uh, uh, with a person that is a SharePoint. I'm actually uh, find through his weblog. I can show he has a YouTube channel. Okay. I can share his YouTube channel at the end. So he's actually helped me to figure out these things a lot. So yeah, thanks to him actually. Is, it, is that Was that John in Australia or do you remember who it was? No, no, he's actually this guy. He's based in New Zealand. He's uh, Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah, Paul. yeah, 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 yeah. I've, okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'll let you keep going. Yeah, so he's actually helped me to figure out that one because I'm not the background of SharePoint, but it's actually helped. His videos helped me to figure out. And so, Mohammed actually asked, asked a question. I'm just going to interrupt real quick. Um, can you select the specific language for the OCR? Oh, you mean that the different? Okay, uh, what support language has? Uh, uh, I need to check that what language it has. Let me. I never check it. Let's look at it now. I can look at it for now to see that is how what sort of language it support. So. Uh, for text analysis, I remember it support different language. It does so, because yeah, uh, Gil covered that. Yep, or it was you. Yeah. Let me. Uh, I can check it very fast. I'm not sure about the other language. I never tried the other one, but I can check it I'll, now. I'll, I'll, I'll look. I'll, I'll I'll take a look. You continue on the sample. Go back to the flow sample. I'll, I will take a look. Okay, thank you, Chad. So here, this is a step. So this is the kind of the steps that we have. Now we are going to kind of uh, uh, make a change. So we are going to actually uh, kind of uh, respond the result to the Power App because we want to show the result in Power App in this stage. In you may not interested to show there. You may want to pass the data to the SQL for example, or you want to pass the data to the Power BI or the other. So that's also possible. But for this example, I want to show it in Power App. So it's a response to Power App. And here I need to provide some data. So here you see that what sort of output we want to that. So the output, because it's take a picture, is going to the OCR and convert it to the text. So I'm going to say that I want to use the text. So the result also I want to be let's say random variable. And that actually, you see that is automatically shows you that detected text. You see the icon of the OCR. So I choose that one. So that's a, so easy. You see that how is actually easy? Yes, there's a, um, uh, for now, uh, not all data format you can pass to OCR. Uh, this is the same problem we have for the other components uh, we have. So for example, I use the face recognition and I saw the same problem there. So I need to convert the data to the other part. So this is my flow, so I'm save my flow. I can test it because it's the first time. So you see that we have the option to test at the here. I show it focus here. And uh, so if you have run it previously, you can run based on the previous data. So I'm just, because I didn't uh, pass any data, I just want to check the connection and everything. So I said that save and test, as you see, is going to check my permission. So uh, is going for the first time is going to uh, log in and check that you have proper access to your SharePoint folder, you have proper access to your API and the other stuff. So I said, yep, that's okay. So it seems that my flow work. So I'm just click on continue and you can run it, but this stage 
doesn't make sense. So we need to connect it to our Power Apps. So if I want to show the process, so till now we create our one of parts of our Power App, so it's not complete yet. We create our flow. I didn't pass it to Power BI at this stage, but you can do that. And now we need to connect these two together. We need to connect our Power Apps to our Microsoft flow. So uh, I need to back to my Power App. Okay, so in this stage, I need to kind of uh, put a, a bottom here to connect that one. So I'm going to click on insert. I want to create a bottom that every time that you click on that is going to run the flow. So go to the insert, click on button here, and uh, I put it somewhere here. Done. Okay, and I'm going to change the title. You can change the title by clicking on that, but I just want to show you that it's possible from also on the here. So I said that OCR, for example, something like this. I'm click on OCR. So I'm creating a bottom uh, here. Then I'm going to the another tab that the last tab that is action. Under the action, you see that we have the flow. That means that it's going to connect to the Microsoft. Head. So uh, just I need to put a name for my flow. I forget to do that. So I put a name for that. For example, uh, Power uh, OCR Power Platform Webinar. I'm going to save it. I want to proper name before I'm saving there. So now it's saved. So if I'm back to the list, it should be there. Yeah, OCR. And you can see that on the list of your Power Apps. So this is my one. So I'm going to the Power App and oh, I'm sorry, here. And I am click on the button that I have here, click on Action, and then click on Flow. So when you click on flow, it's going to connect to the Microsoft flow and it should be bring all of the flow that you have here. So this is the one, actually I have OCR power plan. So I'm going to click on that. When I'm clicking, it's going to adding that to and connect it to the one. So now under the select, under the parameter on select of the bottom, OCR, you see I have a formula like this. OCR, Power Platform Webinar, that was the name of the fellow that I have, dot run. So that means that now I'm able to write some code to do that. So I'm going to pass the image one variable. This is image two, by the way. So image two, and uh, I want to actually to receive the result from Power App. So what's happened here? I'm writing a formula. So this is the name of the flow dot run. I pass the image that I have here, and I want to receive the result. So you remember when I'm create a Microsoft flow? I'm just um, I have a variable OCR text. So if I'm back to the flow that I have here. And I want to show you again. You remember that in the last step, that is response to the power app, I'm defining a variable OCR text. So this is the one that actually appear here. Now I want to actually to uh, set it to the variable. I want to assign the result to the variable. So I write here, write some code over there. Set set. I put OCR result. So I want the result of the Power App be stored in a variable OCR result. Okay. Let's see that. Okay. Uh, I think it should be okay. Just let me check. Uh, that's the image two. 
no it should get one variable i don't know why it says that uh, let me check that one maybe i made a mistake here just let me save it yep yeah, just need just detect text yeah that's correct yep sometimes it's actually uh it's maybe a bit it doesn't need any variable no it should be one uh, let me check that why is actually showing a second variable it should be just one i have a other demo that can show that one because we have the kind of the uh very uh, few just 20 minutes just let me check ocr.run.ocr text yep the formula means correct for me let me just save it so maybe some silly problem happened here i missed something maybe i change something over here let me let me do it again so i'm going to kind of uh control c remove the bottom i may made the mistake here so i'm going to insert again a bottom here sorry about that and i'm going to just going to the action to the flow and find the one i can go for the other one that i have maybe i mistakenly do some problem that one and i'm going to run the image too this is the one that i'm already created the other one that i have and the one is cr text maybe some problem with the so set ocr result should be fine maybe i miss something the other one it seems okay cool so this is a kind of the one i use the other uh follow that i have maybe i missed something here i need to check that one however this is working now so this actually the process was that we actually take a picture we go through the one this is the another follow that i'm using i need to check what's the other parameter that i pass and then we have the text here now i'm going to actually show the result into the uh, label i'm going to put a label to show the final result of the image processing so i put a label here and for that one i need to change some parameters so the parameter that i'm going to change so the text shouldn't be that one so i need to change the um, the text variable to the variable that i have here that is ocr results i'm just copy that one back to the text and instead of the text i'm going to put that one so i want to show the result and because it can be need to be a scroll so i need to go to set another variable that is our flow and here i just want to set a scroll so i want to scroll scroll Okay. Yeah, I want to scroll. So this is actually uh this is our post initial power up. I'm going to save it. I'm going to test it and to show you that how it actually work. I publish it also so we can uh, later on we can see that on the mobile one. So I'm just back there and i need to change it to the camera that i have and i bring the invoice so this is my initial camera that i have i'm going to kind of run it so i'm going to run it at the top you see that we have a preview of the app i'm going to run it against that one so that's for example this is a text that i want to take a picture so i just click on that and I want to actually see that how it work. See that? So it should go and kind of the convert the data for us. Okay, the 
could see. <laughs> oh, I get it again there. Oh, what's the problem there? Oh. Oh, let me see that maybe my uh, OCR is not working. Just let me check again. Sorry. Yep, it's working now. Okay, let, let, let's show you the other one that I have. I think there's a problem with the internet connection or something that I'm set up. Let me show you the one that I'm actually, I already have it. So uh, this one, this is an example that I'm actually have and follow the same process. So I'm going to kind of show that one. So this is the same process, just need to check some parts because there are lots of components over there. So that's may change. So let me change the camera from camera one to camera two. And this is the image that I have. This one should work. So you see that it's a kind of this. So it, it shows the data here. I need to check that was the one. So you see that is actually read that about way veterinary. This is for our dog. It's actually, so you can see the information here. So that's a kind of the uh, uh, very straightforward process that we have here. So as you see that we able to do that. Uh, if you want to see the detail of that one, I have a couple of uh, the, I documented whole of the process here. So uh, it's actually, uh, you can see the one. So this is the, I opened the different parts. So you can actually see that. So here uh, I'm gonna start in the, three different blog posts that you able to see the result over there. So this is the one that will really show the process, how to create the app. And I documented all of the process with some more detail about the how to do that. The other one is actually this is a follow one. Uh, and you can actually create the follow over there. And the other process that I explained has been documented here. I think that I really missed some parts. I need to check that what part I miss. And this is the actually the final process. And also, uh, yep. And uh, also you can see the result here. I have a new one that I'm actually work on that. You may see that this is uh, for image processing. So that means that you can have a, uh, this is another example that I have. I can show you the last part. So you see that how it work. This is another uh, web line that I have for that one that actually uh, help you to go through the, uh, get the image processing. You remember the emotion and the other and show it for the user. So you can actually says that what's the age or the image or the other parts of the, you know, the picture. So what's the age of the people, happiness and the other. So these are the another one that you have. So there are lots of things that actually you can explore. Uh, about the reference, so yeah, I use lots of people resource, but uh, Paul uh, has a really good one. So he's actually, his uh, videos help me a lot to do that. And uh, I'm in touch with him. Maybe he comes also for Divinity. I mean, still in touch. He's not in Oakland. Uh, so yeah, so his, his vlog post really helped me to go through that. And uh, also, uh, yeah, so if you have any more question, we can go through, you can email me or you can actually send me a link on Twitter so I can actually respond to that one. Uh, any question? You know, there hasn't been. Actually, no, I take it back. There has been. It was actually, where can people get the, the recording of this so that way they can go back and reprocess it? It turns out you're actually looking at a recording link now. What's happening is is YouTube under the covers encodes it um, in near real time, and you're about 30 seconds delayed, but you're actually watching the recording. So as soon as we stop and you hit refresh, you'll actually be able to see that you can rewind all the way back. Um, 
that I did a quick count of the languages. It looks like there's about 35. I could be off one or two. I counted them by hand. And I, I put the link on how do you actually um, apply the uh, image to text OCR languages. I put that link in there. So great question. Uh, Neil was asking to look at that flow that wasn't working because he had the same problem. Um, I think you showed one that was working. And that's probably the, uh, it probably makes sense to say focus on that one. Um, what was, oh, the question was, is, uh, Casper was asking, Hey, can I share my power apps outside of my organization or with guest users? And unlike power BI, uh, they haven't enabled that yet, but the, the team mm -hmm. actually has committed to working on that. If you look at the business apps release notes, it's AKA dot MS forward slash business apps release notes, you'll see that it is actually in their 12 month window of, of getting that working. So um, I'm looking forward to that as well. I know that um, when they added that to Teams, that was a huge benefit. So Teams just added that. Power BI has got it. And I'm hoping that Power BI isn't too far behind. OK, uh, Svetlana uh, Vramamava. Oh, God, I really hacked your last name. I apologize. So thank you for the great demo. Um, Maud is asking for the the demo, and Alan was going out and based on our call two days ago with Ruth, uh, put the link in for the chiclet slicer on the forum so that I need to follow up with Amanda. So I I saw that Alan, and I actually was just talking to Amanda last night about it. She didn't have any updates, so I'll I'll recircle back and actually see if she could take a look at that ideas voice or that forum post. Um, other than that, it looks like. Uh, what was the URL that I said? OK, the URL that I said, if you want to know what's happening in Power BI or Power Apps for the next coming six, seven months, as far as what are we planning on delivering, is AK. Actually, can you go to a, a brand new tab? Um, and we'll make sure if we get it type it. Type it really slow. It's aka.ms. So that's the easy part. And then it's uh, forward slash yep. business apps. Oh, too many forward slashes. There we go. Apps, release notes, spelled all out. Oh, you hit enter. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. It's business apps release notes. And then type in release notes. Okay. This should actually take you to all of them are for Power Apps, Flow, and Power BI. Now, if you go back to yeah, another tab um, for me, Layla. Layla didn't mm -hmm. know she would be actually doing my my demos for me. I, and you can actually click on either one of those big blue tabs, and it'll take you to the right place. And this oh. is actually what we're working on. The, yeah, there you go. Yes. In, a, in another tab, um, because this is actually literally all of Dynamics, all of Power Apps, all of Flow, and all, all of Power BI, if you then click on the business intelligence, you can actually see what my team is delivering. Um, down a little bit further. You wanted to stop artificial intelligence. I saw you pause there. You and Garden would be very proud of you, Layla. Um, <laughs> and this is what my team's working on. If you go to another tab, if you want to go directly to this location, um, can you open up another tab in this browser? Yeah. And it's aka.ms forward slash Power BI release notes, all spelled out. I believe is the right URL. Power BI. Power BI. Yeah. Fine. And then get rid of the apps. You have the word apps. Release notes. Yes, that should work. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah that, 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 actually, that. But anyways, the first link um, takes you to the the overall one in that second link, which I have created, I'll have to go out and figure out what's going on with it, just takes you to that same location that um, Layla just looked at. So when you clicked on business intelligence, it takes, takes you directly there. Um, so great, great question. Let's see if there's any other questions and then we'll close it. Um, in meanwhile, also I'm trying to here, yeah. out, uh, what's the problem with that one. So if I figure out, I will show that once I may put some yeah, so just go ahead. Yeah, if any question, I can answer now. Oh, and Alexander says he's actually got the um, the USB cards that I actually printed out for um, the user groups that got back to me. So if you're not a member of the user group uh, and want to do a quick commercial, um, 
I actually sent out some a whole bunch of USB hard drives that say Power Be on it with a bunch of links to uh, great different samples. And I think Reza said that you guys have got yours uh, three or four days ago, Layla. Is that right? Yep, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it looks like they arrived in Texas. Uh, I know that they're in Uruguay and Pakistan as well. So uh, oh, really? go to a user group near you. And if your user group um, leader sent me their address, I sent them 26 hard drives to give out the next user group meeting. So um, thank you. For the folks going to Definity, I've got Power BI shirts already there. They arrived uh, two weeks ago. And I'll actually be bringing more uh, hard drives. But these are special hard drives. These actually are stainless steel bottle openers that say Power BI on them. So you have to get those directly from me. OK, I will see a bunch of you in Definity. Otherwise, I will see you guys uh next week and next week we're actually doing um oh how to create custom visuals with ted pattison so if you've never created a custom visual um he's going to walk us through it, how to use actually uh node.js i think it's and uh digiplot no not digiplot that's our script um <laughs> the the, th the 3d library for actually creating custom visuals and maybe we'll actually show uh chartacular Chart charticulator, as well as another way of creating Power BI custom visuals. Otherwise, Layla, I'm going to hand it back to you to thank everybody and say goodbye. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, I forgot the problem. So here I didn't. I put the JPG. I didn't should put it here. I mixed it up with another demo. So you shouldn't do that. So now it's actually is working. So I'm going to kind of take a picture. For example, this one. Abbott's <laughs> way something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh it's, it's a builder Reza. Yeah. yeah. You going to pay it too? <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually going to work. So the problem was that actually not working. Uh, just remember, this is also a good note for me. In the uh, Here, you shouldn't put the type of the image in the file. So I initially, I put that JPD, uh, but you shouldn't do that. So it should be just the name of the file. It's going to store it. Uh, and you see that is actually working now. So this is a, a, a power app that I have from there. And you can see kind of working with that. And uh, so you see that when it's blur, it actually doesn't show properly. So it's not working on the blur actually uh, images. So yeah, that's it. Kind of the uh, good point and bad point at that. But now it's working. Yeah, so just be careful about that one. Cool. I do have one last question and then we're going to go. So. I see this is a veterinary build. Do they charge by the pound and do you have to pay extra because it's not flophicus size? It's going to charge for the OCR one. So no, 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 no. your your veterinary. This is a veterinary build that oh. we're holding up. Does he does he does he charge by the kilo? So for everybody on the call, I don't know if you guys know this that Reza and Layla, they don't have a dog. They actually have a woolly mammoth that lives with them. And his name is Snofflophagus. So I get to go out and hang out with Snofflophagus. Anyways, guys, thank you very much. Layla, thank you. Thank if you. Reza could hear us in the background, thank you, Reza. And I'm going to see you guys in a couple of weeks. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so oh, much. Oh, there he is. There he is. There's Snofflophagus. <laughs> yeah. He's... With a real dog. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Cool. Thank you, Jack. Thanks so much. And thanks, everyone. Sorry about the just uh, things. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. Please, uh, if you have any questions, please back to me. And I'm really happy to answer. Thank you, Jack. Thanks so much.